my good human, welcome to my channel and welcome back if you've been here for a while. I love connecting with you in this way. I'm Luana, nervous system specialist, and here on the channel, I talk about trauma healing, nervous system, and relational health. In this video, it's a mix of relational health and nervous system health because we are talking about how to stop lashing out at people. Have you ever just had this gut feeling and knowing that Oof, I'm walking around the world on edge all the time, wound up, I've got a lot of responsibilities, work, kids, relationship, and it feels like you're in this pressure cooker. So lashing out happens, it's not great, um, but please don't beat yourself up about it. I've made a playlist on this channel all about healthy aggression and anger. And yes, anger can be expressed in a healthy, safe, and contained way, but we need to learn the skills how to do that. In this video, I am giving you a little snippet of how to begin to stop lashing out. I'm going to end it with an example from myself, my life, of how I taught myself how to stop lashing out. Let's start with the first thing. Anger, that fight response, when we think of fight, flight, flee, freeze and fawn, that autonomic nervous system, sympathetic nervous system response is the fight. It's I'm gonna protect, I'm going to defend, even if it's maybe, you know, in, in relationships, romantic, platonic, it happens a lot, work relationships, where we're just uh, going, 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 and we're in this mode with our blinders on, and if someone does something that we weren't planning, then we lash out. So from the perspective of the autonomic nervous system, first of all, we need to build the capacity and regulation for our organism, our human body and being to be with higher intensity emotions, because anger and healthy aggression is a higher intensity emotion. So right off the bat, that's what I teach in my programs is how to build the capacity to stay present with the sensations of frustration, annoyance, anger, rage, annihilation, energy, and it takes time to build that capacity. However, I see people all the time, every day, taking those baby steps and getting there, no matter what age, no matter what history. So that's number one, is building that capacity to feel feels that don't always feel so great. And it can be scary if you know, if you're someone that knows, oh, I do have a lot of rage inside. I keep it in a nice little box at the top of the pantry because I don't know what to do with it. I totally understand that. And taking these baby steps to heal the nervous system, build more capacity is the starting off ground. That's why I've made the program Nervous System Regulation Made Simple to be the jumping off point of building up your capacity. Once you've built up a capacity, to stay present with those bigger feels, then we need to learn how to follow those organic impulses that come within. And I'm not talking about that impulse to lash out. I'm talking about impulses like, I'm hungry, I'm gonna go eat. I'm sleepy, I'm gonna take a nap, or I'm gonna wrap it up for the night and go to bed. I feel my bladder's full, I have to go pee. I feel like I just need to jump outside and take in some fresh air, I'm gonna go outside. Following those impulses helps us kind of normalize those feelings in our body that don't always feel good. Like it doesn't always feel good to have a full bladder, but it helps us build our capacity to be with those feelings that feel good, like having a delicious sandwich and really allowing ourselves to feel that deliciousness and nourishment as well as like having a full bladder or having to go to the bathroom and following those impulses and getting that in your neural circuitry as, as a normal thing is the next stepping block. And after that, um, we need to learn how to stop suppressing emotions. Emotions are a spectrum. Most people think of them as good emotions, bad emotions. And I only wanna feel the good ones, so I'm gonna cut off from that. The problem with this is that when we cut off from allowing ourselves to feel sad, allowing ourselves to feel lonely, scared, devastated, then the other end of the spectrum shrinks as well. We feel less enjoyment, we feel less 
joie de vivre, aliveness, we feel less contentment. And then our range of living in this human experience, our humanity gets quite small. And that's when health issues come online. So learning how to stop suppressing emotions. This is what I teach in my work and my colleagues teach this as well. Building the regulation, following those impulses, and eventually acknowledging, oh, this is what sadness feels like. This is what frustration or disgust or betrayal or guilt feels like. Once we're getting a broader vocabulary for that felt sense of an emotion, like disgust, for example, I've done video on disgust, toxic shame, and healthy aggression, then we kind of have that as a neurological imprint of, ah, it's okay for me to feel that emotion. And then we get to broaden our ability to stop lashing out. Because if we're completely cut off from our body and what's actually happening when we lash out, like I, I work with a lot of people that just black out and they'll go into these rages and start throwing things at the wall and whatnot. So we really have to scale it back and start with baby steps. You might be you know, annoyed or angry at me and that's okay for um, saying this of, oh, we can't just go to the big, big intensity. But that's kind of the whole problem is that once our nervous system is in blackout mode and throwing things or, you know, saying mean things to people on the phone, then we've kind of gone past our limit already. It's like if I fill this cup up with a bunch of water, we've already um, overflowed the autonomic nervous system. So that's why we have to start with baby steps. So once we can stop suppressing emotions so much, we're gonna feel more enjoyment, but we also might feel more sadness or more rage more often. So this is how we begin to stop lashing out at people. And I wanna give you an example so that you can kind of put this into a real life scenario. I used to work as a server for many, many years, almost 15, 16, 20 years. And uh, with this, <laughs> with working as a server or waitress, depending on where you are in the world, I met all kinds of people. And I did have to uh, be professional and put you know, the service first in many scenarios. So there were times when people have said some really mean stuff to me. People get hangry, people will be people. And you know, they'll say like racist comments to me, demeaning things, or it can be as simple as my butter wasn't as soft as I wanted it to be. You're a dumb B-I, you know what, because of it. And uh, yeah, that's a real story. So what I would do when that happened is at the beginning, I would actually freeze and dismiss the fact that that was actually really mean and that hurt, I would dismiss that. And over the many years, because I started, before I started doing this 100%, I started in working in the service industry and bridging over to doing this as my main uh, vocation. So over time, when someone would say a comment to me, I would start to feel this anger in my belly. My muscles would get tense, my chest would tighten, my throat may tighten, and my eyes would often zoom in on them, which was a threat. And I had to take a break and, you know, sometimes I would just take their order and then walk away and have to either go to the bathroom or go to a colleague that I felt safe enough with. And I would have to move that uh, fight response. Sometimes I would go to the bathroom and push on a wall. Uh, these are other skills that I'll show you in another video or I would be with a colleague and they would give me some resistance with their hand and I would literally move through a fight response and growl and, and hiss and, and sometimes clench my fists. And because I did that baby steps over a long period of time, it didn't flood my system, I didn't get overwhelmed and it would help my sympathetic nervous system come up from that fight and threat of someone saying something mean and then come back down on the other side and into more regulation. And the beauty of it is that I could go back to the individual that said some whack S-H-I-T and be human and not be mean to them or meet them with the nasties as well, right? So, you know, sometimes that mean I went back and sometimes they would apologize because they would realize 
or other times um, I, I would say something and other times I would be able to come back and have my heart not be totally locked up and locked down um, because I let that life force energy flow through into that fight response that was channeled in a healthy way through the help of a colleague. Um, thank you, all the colleagues in my past. <laughs> and Or like a door in a bathroom where I just gave some pressure and felt, stayed present with the visceral experience of that heat, that boil in my blood, that rise. So that my sympathetic nervous system could go up and then come down. And then I could meet the person with, with logic and just be a person with them and not hold resentment. I didn't have to walk home or, you know, after my shift have this resentment or, or be, you know, hold a grudge against someone. That's why we hold grudges or feel small is because we suppress that life force energy. So how to stop lashing out is building our nervous system regulation, that capacity, and starting to listen to our impulses, our bodily impulses. I have to go to the bathroom. I want to go get some sun. I'm sleepy. I'm going to rest. I'm hungry. I'm going to eat. Stop suppressing your emotions. When I feel sad, I'm going to let myself feel sad. When I feel annoyed, I'm going to let myself feel annoyed or fr frustrated. If I feel contentment, what does that really feel like? I'm content. I'm enjoying this. And then anger will come because it's the full spectrum. The more we widen the spectrum on one end, the more it widens on the other end. And then eventually, once you stop suppressing those emotions, you have that capacity as a base, then comes the tools such as pushing on a wall or being present with someone as you growl or hiss, um, which I teach more in detail in my programs and I leave that for the programs mostly because it does take a certain amount of capacity to have on board so that you don't get flooded because flooding doesn't help with anything. So that is my video on stopping yourself from lashing out at people. I hope you learned something from my example. Uh, you can get there. If I can do it, you can do it. And it takes baby steps. So make sure you stick around this playlist on anger and healthy aggression so that you have the full spectrum of knowledge because knowledge is power, especially when it comes to healing healthy aggression. Thank you so much for being here and I will see you in the next video.